happen right and then i will upload the class in my youtube video so yeah i'm trying to be high tech which is of course because we're going to go over electricity this semester so i have to fit in so first let's start with canvas so that's your canvas here first thing you go to module so in the first module here you're going to find the links that you need that link here will take you to my dropbox and inside my dropbox here that i share with you so i don't get money from dropbox okay it's just that i want don't want to promote dropbox but um canvas does not let me upload slides because it needs me to tag every single picture in my slide which is not possible because my slides are full of pictures so instead i have found a way to share the lectures with you that's going to be in my dropbox so here you have two folder so you click on that folder here and you see that will be the first pdf to download is that clear so if you have any question do not hesitate okay so then i go back to here and here you have another folder and it says tutorial and i have videos here where i go over the problems that you find in the slides so it's not going to be last like last semester i don't go over the assignment and i will tell you why But these are just the problems that you find in the slides and they are tutorials. So that will be for Dropbox, okay? And the link in, is found in Canvas. Okay, so if you have any question, do not hesitate. Then here you have the link to my YouTube channel. And it's just a way that I have found to, to share the videos. So you, you might ask why I didn't share those videos in my Dropbox. It's because I have to pay extra to have more space. And I, I didn't want to pay extra. So you see here, that was last year class. So now I will have this year class in that playlist. Is that clear? So I will try to upload every single lecture. So if you want to go over something that you are um, not sure about, or if you miss a class, not that you should miss a class, you can, uh, you can watch the video online. This semester, I have invested in demo. I will try to have demo. So of course, it's better to come uh, in person. OK, let's go back here, modules. What else do we have here? You have useful links here, if you click there. And so here you have, okay, uh, these are the same topics that I'm gonna cover. So it's a, a channel and I use the same slides, slide as it does. As, as he so it's nice so here you have a very nice website about physics or tutorials can academy you all know about that and then for those going into the medical field that's also very interesting so for the textbook for the textbook um, this is the textbook that is recommended by the physics department so you can you can buy it through the school okay so it's going to be here if you buy it for the school but you don't have to because i don't use the homework um, through mastering physics right but let's say if money is not an issue or if you have a scholarship buying it online is nice because they offer you tutorials like the solve problem, they, they have videos and they take you step by step. 
but you don't have to. If money is an issue, but you need a textbook, of course. I'm not saying that you should not buy a textbook. You have to buy a textbook. But if money is an issue, then you can buy an older um, edition. You know, the physics didn't change. The physics that we're going to study didn't change since the 19th century. So if you, if you get a 20 years old textbook, you know, from the same author, it doesn't matter. My slides are based on that book here, Older Edition. And this one is a very nice book for those who want to go into, a, a, I don't know, medical school, medical field, work in the medical field. So it's a very nice book. And of course, they are at the 10th edition. The first edition was when I was a student in the 1989. So that's how old I am, right? So now they are at the 10th edition. So you can get a very old edition for a very cheap price. It's up to you. But you do need a textbook. So someone asked me, are you going to use homework for mastering physics? No, I don't. I make my own homework. You know, that's why you have so many typos. But uh, I'm working on that. Any question? OK, so that was about the textbook. Equation sheet. OK, I have found very nice equation sheet, finally. So I recommend that you see, you see how you get in trouble? That means you are in trouble. That means that your PDF is not good enough for them. So if you have one PDF that is not good for them, it's fine. But if you have many PDF, you get a call. So that's why I'm using Dropbox. So here you have an equation sheet. And what you want to do is to print it out. Okay, so you can have it next to you when you're going to do your homework. Okay, and I will try to print them out also for the test. So here you have the constant we're going to use. For example, you have somewhere the charge of an electron. You have constants we're going to work with. So Coulomb's constant, for example, will be in the first unit, 9 times 10 to the 9. And then here, it's very nice because you have all the symbols for the units. Um, if you don't have a calculator, you know, they give you the, the cosine and the sine. Prefix are here, so if you forgot what a milli is, you see it says 10 to the negative 3, uh, nano 10 to the negative 9, and then you have all the equations here for electricity will be on the right. And then you go down, that's not for you, but here it's nice too because you have Socatoa and then some geometry. Okay, so very cool. So you should print it out. Put that on your to-do list for today after the class. Any questions so far? Okay, so then that's going to be the topics here that we're going to cover. So this semester, all the topics are going to be very important for everyone because electricity is ubiquitous, right? We use it in everyday life. So if you work in natural sciences, for example, uh, let's take an example like the human body has a nervous system, and the nervous, nervous system is an electrical system. So for example, you have those sensors here, right? And if you touch something very hot, what's going to happen? The nerves is going to send a signal through the nervous system. So it's, it's going to be an electric impulse, goes to your brain, through your spine, remove your hand dummy, go back, so you remove your hand. 260 miles per hour. So it's all electrical. Your heart, you all know that. You know it's a muscle, and that muscle works also with electricity. If you go at the very small scales, like if you work in chemistry, you know that some molecules are polarized. Like the water molecule has a plus and a minus permanently. Right? That's why water is a universal solvent. If you look at the cells in, in a body, living organism, a cell is like a small circuit. 
across the membrane, you have a voltage. And then you have electrolyte, you know, calcium, sodium, you know, those electrolytes that, especially if you are an athlete, you need to uh, have. No, I was reading about that, like, um, yeah, because I had uh, my lip here this morning that was twitching. So I read it's a lack of potassium. So I went to buy dark chocolate, and now it's not twitching anymore, right? So everything is uh, physics and chemistry. So anyway, instead of starting with static electricity, I'm going to start with circuit because it's more hands-on. And I have a lot of demo, I have virtual lab, and it's it's more like um, it's it's easier to understand. And I'm trying to hook you up to physics, and then we go to electrostatics. Still, I have a lot of demo for you, and then a little bit more abstract. So that will be done in a nutshell, because that's not something that you're going to use um, in your field. However, I will go to electromagnetic waves and spectrum so we can talk about MRI, X-ray, scan, CAT scan, ultrasound, those kind of things. Although ultrasound is not part of the electromagnetic waves but kind of work the same way. Then we go to optics, a lot of applications, whether you are using a microscope or you want to understand the human eye. Then we talk about waves, and the best part, I leave it for the end, I hope to get to that, that will be nuclear physics, very important if you go to radiotherapy, so it will be just an introduction, because I know a lot of students, you know, end up working with, uh, in nuclear medicine, for example, they are always hiring, so it's good to understand what's going on. We talk about cancer, so I'm trying to have a lot of application for natural science in uh, in my class. And of course, it's not about what you uh, cover, how much you cover, it's what you uncover, right? Any questions so far? So I will try to be organized, which is very hard for me, but I'm trying. So for example, for the first unit, you see unit one, all the pop quizzes relevant to that unit and the assignment will be underneath here. And here you have some useful link. Right? So I divided everything in unit. So for example, next Thursday or this Thursday, when you're going to take your pop quiz, all you have to do, you go to that unit here, and I will have my pop quiz here. Okay. So let's go back to the slides. Okay, so about grading. So first of all, 18% will be homework. And for the homework, I have hints, right, to help you out. You have to take a post-it and hide the hint. First, you have to suffer. You have to feel the pain. You have to struggle. You have to work with your classmates. And only when you have suffered enough can you look at the hints. Because even if you have 18 points, that's not going to help you pass the class, right? The idea of the homework is to train for the test. In addition to that, I highly recommend that you work in a study group. So at the end of the class, we'll finish early, maybe 10 minutes early, so you can make WhatsApp group. And because it's a massive class, um, we can divide, like we can do this group here, you can make a WhatsApp group, and this group here, you can make a WhatsApp group, and then up to here, we can make a WhatsApp group, and you can make the WhatsApp group, and this group here, and the next, you can make that WhatsApp group. If you're not happy with your group, you know, you, you can change group. So like, like that, you can organize study group, right? Because, of course, what matters is connection, connection, connection. So at the end of the class, you have to make new connections, make new friends, don't be shy. The best connections are done in college. Okay? So homework, they, they, you should work together. You can always get the answer, you know how to do it, you know, you know the secret. 
you, you, you buy a mobile ship to check, and because most of the question come from the test bank, you get the answer, okay? But there is no point to that. You have to try on your own. And then you have three in-person tests. So in-person, on paper, 20 multiple choices, 20, no more, okay? Because I have 100 students. So 20 questions. Try not to miss the test because if I have a makeup, I don't have one hour and 40 minutes for that. So I would divide in two. Okay, so it's, it's better for you to take the test in person because otherwise you will have to come to office hours and it's a, it's a headache. So come, don't miss the test. Each test here is 20%, 20 points out of a hundred. Oh, I will tell you that after, but anyway, 20 points here, test one, test two, and the final. In person, on paper, and I'm aiming at those dates here. Not sure, it's a tentative. The final is forced on us. So it's a date, okay? Don't miss your date. I, I cannot change the date for that. And we, I will have to stick to that. So you can write that down. Don't tell me after that you have a conflict. I am the first one to give you the date here. So if you have a chemistry exam or whatever, you have to do something about it. Don't miss it. Then we have a take-home test. That will be test number three. That will be 10 points. And you take that test online. Uh, I will open a window for it. And it's not proctor, so do whatever you want. The, the idea is to, uh, to boost your grade. And then you have pop quizzes every, I'll try, every single class at the end of the class, so at 3.30, based on the previous lecture. And it's online, so if you miss the class because you go to... Uh, Hawaii, for example, and you come back, you can take the test in Hawaii because it's going to be online. I will just open the test at 3.30 and close it at 3 uh, something, 3.45, for example, okay? And there is no makeup. So if you come in person, the idea is to discuss the problems with your peers. So it means it's like a forum. So it means this group should work together, 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 right? Don't be shy, you can ask me questions. If you are online, of course I can answer. That's not going to work. That's also an incentive to make it to class. The other idea is to um, realize problems you, or concepts that you do not understand. Right, so then you can ask me and ask, uh, um, and uh, I'll help you out. Usually I am, before this class, I am in my office, AC1 387. So it's on the third floor. There is a hallway with full of um, offices, AC1 387. And I'm available also after this class. And uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, I can be also available here at 11 a.m. But you have to catch me, like Pokemon. Otherwise, I go, right? Uh, because I have an astronomy class from 10 to uh, 10.50. So 10.50, you will find me here. And then I go home. Attendance is 5%, 5 points. And I do it because last semester it was too hard to <laughs> do it one student at a time to check how many present, how many absent. You, you have no idea how long it took me. So now uh, it, uh, it will be in the computer. If you add everything up, you get to 105, not 100. So you have five point bonus. So if you, let's say you have everything good and you don't go to class, you can have 100. Or if you miss a few quizzes, it won't be a big deal. So you have five points, right? It's out of 105. Is that clear? Right? Isn't that a nice thing here? So otherwise, I will have to lose my voice. And I scream a lot at my son, so 
I need my voice to act all that. I play too much video games. Okay, any questions? Yeah. Yeah, the same thing. So if you uh, if you if you make videos about demonstration, and I will uh, as we go along, I will give you ideas. If you make a demonstration, original one, not take from TikTok and send it to me. That doesn't work. You have to do it your uh, your own. Then yes, you will get extra credit. Any more questions? Yeah. Sure. So if if you buy it for the school, it's going to be an ebook, and it's nice because you have um, embedded tutorials. Now, if money is an issue, then you can hunt it. You can go on check, for example. You hunt the textbook. You can go on Amazon. You can hunt it, or you can get a very old edition. Okay, so you can hunt the book, right? You can even get an international edition because the same book that they do for India is like 10 times less than the one that they do for America, but it's the same physics, okay? They are not going, there is no physics different for India or for here. Doesn't matter as long as you have a textbook. But some people have scholarship that cover textbooks, so that's why in that case, it's better to get it for school if they are not in back order. So back order takes forever, so forget about that. Okay? So I, I just want, uh, before starting DC circuit, I'm going to go over some history. But at the same time, I will introduce the concept that we're going to cover next. Okay, so I'll call that a historical note. And first day, I will have a pop quiz based on that. No, nothing else. It's just history. Not, not that I'm saying that history is uh, uh, easier than physics. I mean, it depends for who. Okay, so historical note. So the first time that experiments were recorded about static electricity. So static electricity is when charges are involved. So for example, if you are doing your laundry, you take the clothes out of the dryer and you have this clinging sound. That's static electricity. So the first time those experiments were recorded uh, were by the Greek. And they found out if you take a piece of amber, do you know what amber is? It comes from the... Yeah, petrif petrified wax, it's a good definition. It comes from the tree. And if you watch the movie, you know, Jurassic Park, there is this, I don't know, they have some uh, insect petrified inside, and they, they get the DNA. I don't know, they make a giant one. I forgot the story. But it comes from the tree, and, and yes, uh, it's hard. So if you take a piece of amber, and you rub it against a fur, right? Like that's a fur, maybe a rabbit or, or cat. That's what they used for experiment. And um, at the time, they were just rubbing them against their clothes. The amber here become charged. But they didn't understand what was going on. They just noticed that when they do that, then if you touch someone or if you touch frogs, you get a spark and you can shove the frogs. I'm talking about frogs because that's what they did. When they were bored, you know, nothing to do, they didn't have TikTok, they didn't have all the social stuff, so they rub a piece of amber against their clothes and they will go and, and shove frogs and the frogs will hop in despair and that was very fun to watch, right? So they didn't understand what was going on. So I'm going to tell you what's going on, just to introduce what's coming next. So when you are rubbing, so first of all, these materials, do you think they are insulators or conductors? Do you think you can make a circuit out of amber or out of fur? No, they are insulators, right? Which means 
if if I if I cut that piece here of wire and I replace it with a piece of amber or a piece of wool, it's not going to work. If I replace it by a piece of aluminium or a piece of copper, it's going to work. So that means insulators they don't let electrons to flow. They don't let current to flow. So if I apply a voltage, electrons are not going to flow. And we're going to see that electricity, the type of electricity you get from the wall here, are actually electrons flowing. And why is that? Because in an insulator, the electrons are bound. They are tightly bound to their nuclei. They love their nuclei. They don't want to go, OK? No way, I'm going to leave you. So they are very, very tightly bound. So even if you apply a voltage, they won't move, which is not the case if you have a piece of copper here, like you have a wire. I'm, I'm scared to pull it out. But if you have a wire and you apply a voltage, like the voltage you have here, the electrons inside the copper are going to flow, and you get a current. But however, if you rub those two insulators together, you are doing work. Remember last semester to do work is to apply a force over a distance, right? You are doing work. So you are using your own energy. That energy is going to be used to transfer electrons from the fur to the amber. So because you are doing work, there is a transfer of electrons from the amber, uh, from the fur to the amber. So the amber is going to be negatively charged, and the fur is going to be positively charged. So it's just an introduction. I'm going to see that in details. But the amber will be charged. So it's, it's going to be electrons here. And, and then because it's charged, you can, you can make a spark. So same way, like for example, here you have carpet. And if I rub my feet on it, I'm going to pick up electrons that go through my body because I am a conductor. Electrons are very upset to be next to each other. They hate each other. So if I touch a doorknob, I'm going to have a spark, right? It's going to happen to you when you get shot. So that's what happened there, but of course they didn't understand what's all going on. Amber, amber, um, in Greek, it's electron. That's what where the word electron comes from, from amber, because by using amber, uh, amber is very good at picking up electron. And once you have an electron here, you you can shock. So they did not understand what's going on, but they understood that if you rub two insulators, right, then you pick up enough fluid that they didn't understand that it was to shock and to make spark. So then in the mid 17th century, they, they, they scale it up. So this guy here in Germany, he made a huge static machine. So it was the first electrostatic machine. So the idea is still you have two insulators. You are doing work, right? You have to use your muscle here. You have, you have to do work. They rub against each other. One is giving out electrons, become positive. The other one becomes negative, even though they didn't understand what's going on. But they did understand that you can make spark and you can shock each other. So that was very, very fun. And the people at the time, so you have two kinds of people. I don't think it changed much, but you have the elite, you know, the first, uh, what do you call that, the farm trust babies. They don't have to do work, you know, they were bored. So they had to find a way to entertain themselves. And then you have, of course, the working class that they, they could not do that, right? They could, they could not have fun like that. So they came up with all kinds of um, way to, to create spark. So 
So here is an example. Uh, it's same static machine, rubbing happening to insulator rubbing against each other. Let's say this one is uh, picking up electrons. So what do you think our body is? Is it a conductor or is it an insulator? It's conductor. Because we, we are fluid right? It's all fluid, electrolytes. So we are a very good conductor. Interestingly, if you take water, like neutral water, pH zero, it's not a good conductor. So that fluid is a good conductor. So the electrons, instead of staying on the shoes, they're going to flow in the body. And electrons don't like to be inside. They will flow outside the body and try to find a path to the ground. So we're going to see that electricity made of electrons flowing, their goal is to go back to the ground. Right? So that's why if I put my finger into the plug, that's not a good idea because the electrons use my going to use my body to go back to the ground, right? To make a full circuit. So that's why, okay, first lesson, don't put your fingers in the plug. Because you will make a path to the ground. But here it was it was a current flowing, but not enough to kill. So you have a spark here, the electrons jump through the air. So you have a breakthrough of the air. You make a spark, it's like a small lightning, and it goes, you can make a human chain. It's very fun. So people were working on that, having fun with it. And then in 18th century, there is another breakthrough done by chance just by chance. And what happened is that you see it's still a static machine. So you're doing work. Let's say this is positively charged and that will be negatively charged. So everything here is positive. And this guy, I cannot say his name is from Holland. They have impossible name. And if you are from Holland, maybe you can say his name here, but he, just by chance, he, he was uh, playing around, doing experiments, trying to understand. And just by chance, he had a jar here full of water. So this is positive here. And then he was holding the jar here. And remember, the ground is full of charges, right? So all those electrons in the ground go through his body and go here. So this is negative, that will be positive, positive, negative. They want to come together because that's what negative charges want. They want to combine with positive charges, but they can't because you have water in between. It was an insulator. And just by accident, with his hand, he touched her. So what happened to him? He got a shock, huge shock, right? He said, I will never do that again. Other people try after him and some people die. Okay, because you can build up so much charge that you can really get electrocuted. But the point is that he had built the first capacitor. Capacitor for those going into the medical field is the principle behind a defibrillator. So if you have a defibrillator, you see you have two conductors. One is positively charged, the other one is negatively charged. And you are holding that energy here because positive and negative, they are dis in despair, right? They desperately want to come together, positive and negative, but you won't let them. You are just holding that energy here. And then you put that across your heart this charge and you have a huge surge in current between the plus and the minus very quickly and you control of course the voltage and the idea is that to make the heart because the heart is an electrical system you want to make the heart you know start to beat again at the right pace so this is what we call a capacitor and the capacitor 
is a device that we hold electric energy, that we hold charges, right? So positive, negative, you know, you go around, and all you have to do, put that through your heart, is charge. So at the time, they call it the Leyden jar. Okay, because as me, they could not say his name, so instead, they named the device after the city he was from, Leiden in Holland. So they did all kind of experiments. We will learn about capacitors later on. But capacitors are found in any circuit. Any electronic device will have capacitors. So it's an electronic component that we use for several, several um, goal, you can hold charge, so you can make, for example, computer memory, so if it's charged, it's going to be a 1, if it's not charged, it's going to be 0, so 1, 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, that's uh, digital information. You can use it to as a timing device, so it works like a battery, you know the 1.5 battery that you use? Except, oh, you're going to tell me what's the difference. So, of course, you all know battery, right? 1.5 battery. And this comes from, I think it was like a speaker of my son. I'm not sure where it comes from. But uh, you see, you have capacitors in the back. On the other side, you have integrated circuit, right? So, capacitors are everywhere. So it can act, it can work like a battery. What do you think is the difference between them? Very good, right? The capacitor will produce a very high surge in current during a very small time. So it can be very high, but small time. Whereas a battery, will burp out current, but continuously in a very long time. This one will be discharged quickly in a short time, and you can control the time. This one will discharge over a very long time. So this one can kill you, not this one, okay? Because um, you, uh, those are tiny, but you have uh, what is called ultra, capacitor, you know, the huge one that they use in transformer, for example, those you should never touch, right? Because a capacitor stay charged for a long time. So you don't know if it's charged or not. Okay, it doesn't say, I am charged, you know, beware of me. I'm not charged, okay, I'm safe to touch. They have to be very careful. Um, so they, they can kill because they give out a very huge surge in current in a very short time. Okay, but that's the idea of a defibrillator, of course. Any question? Yeah. Am I recording the lecture? Good question. Yes, I am. If you have any question, let me know. So until then, it was not understood what was going on. And then our favorite physicist, you know, because he was American and at the time we didn't have many physicists, uh, Benjamin Franklin, by then he was wealthy. He did his uh, publishing company. So his, he was fascinated by static uh, electricity and he really wanted to understand what was going on. And he is the one who understood that you had two kinds of charges, positive and negative. And then he understood that only one kind can move, which are the electrons, right? The nuclei, they don't move. Only the electrons move. But that he didn't know which one it was. And he had 50% to get it right, 50% to get it wrong, he got it wrong. He thought that 
they were positive charges moving and not electrons. So nowadays we know that inside those wires it's electrons moving from high voltage to low voltage. He thought it was the opposite, but it was still a big breakthrough. He did that very famous experiment with a kite. So people think, it's a misconception, people think that the lightning was striking the kite and electricity flow, that didn't happen, because otherwise he would have been dead, too much, too much current. Instead, he was very careful, very smart man, and he picked up electricity from the air that will go through the thread here, which was a conductor, to the key. And when he touched the key, he was shocked. He didn't like it at all. Okay? He, he didn't repeat that experiment. Others repeat the experiment and they die. Right? Some of them died. You can, you can Google the stories. So he became very famous, even in Europe. He was invited you know, in France, in Paris, at the king uh, court by Louis the Fifteenth, and he was very, uh, a very lovable man. They were all fond of him. They were all fond of him so much that the king did a very big mistake for France. They gave him money for the American Revolution, and it was good for America, of course. But it was not good for France, because France was already in a very bad recession, like it is now, and it got worse, right? So we're very bankrupt, so like it's happening again. But um, uh, that, that caused the head of his son, Louis the Sixteenth, because Americans were supposed to give back the money, the, the French thought, okay, it's a good investment. They're going to take over the, the British and they will have money and they're going to pay us back with you know, some interest. It never happened. <laughs> bye bye, you know. I am you know, across the Atlantic, try to get me. Um, so they never paid back. Therefore, we had the French Revolution for the best of the world. I'm not sure. I don't do politics. But that's the story. So since then, because we love Benjamin Franklin, um, he was a very nice guy, okay? It's not like Newton who was very, a very horrible man. So in a circuit, we're going to see that you have a power supply, and then you have a load, and we're going to pretend that it's positive charges moving. Whereas it's really the opposite, right? So we know that it's electron moving from negative to plus, but because we love Benjamin Franklin, we have what is called the conventional direction of current, and we say, okay, it's positive charges moving, because that's what he thought at the time, even though he was proven wrong. Any question? Yeah. That was after, after, after Benjamin Franklin. That was in the, that's so cool, huh? <laughs> that, that was more in the 19th century, right? Coming next. Tesla. Tesla, no. 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 When, when is uh, Nicholas Tesla? Was in the, at the same time as uh, Thomas Edison. 19th century, right? Thomas Edison was a very not friendly man. And they had a very big fight with Tesla, right? Since you talk about Tesla. Tesla was for AC, and Thomas Edison was for DC. And you know what Thomas Edison did to make his point? He wanted to show that electricity could be very dangerous if it was used like we use it to do, like this in AC, you know what he did? He killed? Oh, not the electrocution chair, but electrocution, not for human yet, for 
elephant, right? Now, as you can still find this video when he electrocutes an elephant. So it was really the beginning of using TV to, um, to wire people, right? Listen, electricity is very dangerous. Look at this poor elephant, I can electrocute it, right? It, it was really the, the, first, the first steps in the, using the media, but at the end, Tesla won. He also electrocuted dogs, so that's a very, very nice man. I, th I think you can find even the video that, that was made at the time, but it's, it's not, not very nice. Okay, any questions so far? So which, which charge is flowing? Is it electron or positive charge? Electrons, very good, right? But we pretend it's positive charge because we love Benjamin Franklin, right? So very smart guy. So then we move to the 18th century. 18th century, something also happened by chance. So a lot of science is done by chance, just by hands-on experiment, trying here, trying there until something happened. So uh, it starts with, uh, in Italy, with uh, Luigi Galvani. Luigi, Luigi, Luigi Galvani is a, what kind of name? Italian, right? And he was not a physicist. He was not even a chemist. He was an anatomist. So he was working on uh, anatomy, dissecting animals, and especially, again, those poor frogs, right? <laughs> The same frog that was uh, were jumping around, it got worse now. <laughs> they were cut in half and dissected. Maybe you did that in school. Did you do it in school, dissecting frog? Right? Is it cool or it's not cool? Gross? So he was doing experiments, and something happened just by chance. The, the frog leg were hanging by a hook made of brass. Okay, brass is a kind of metal. And then he touched here the, the other part of the leg with uh, 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 what is called a scalpel, like made of steel. So gra uh, brass and steel. So two kinds of metal. All of a sudden, the, the frog leg starts to switch. Right? So we know what happened is just that, but they didn't know at the time, if you have two kinds of metal, like brass here, and then you have steel there, and you have an electrolyte in between, you have a battery. That's how you make a battery. Uh, example, you can make a, we, we're gonna see that next, but you can make a lemon battery. That will be a video that you want to make, for example, if you want to do an easy experiment, you take lemon, you have a piece of copper, like a penny, you have an iron nail, for example, that will be a battery, you can get voltage out of it, right? So that's how we make battery. And, but we, we're, gonna, we're gonna go more into details in the comic unit, so I will give you more details. I'm not going to give you the details now, because it's coming next. My point is that he made the first battery, right? So inside here you have some kind of electrolyte, some kind of paste. It could be lemon juice, for example, at, at that time. And then here you have one metal and here you have another metal, right? So it was the first battery, except he didn't understand that. He didn't understand what was going on. He thought that Life is connected to electricity. So he thought that life inside the frog was producing electricity. And that inspired this idea of life and being electricity or electricity being life, inspired the very famous novel of Marie Shelley, which is Frankenstein, right? Because 
uh, th there was a group of people who thought um, if you electrocute a dead thing, could be animal or could be a human, maybe it will come back uh, to life. So there was all kind of gross experiments that were done. This is the most, I mean, this is the funnier, most funny movie I've ever seen. It's by Mel Brooks, you know, Frankenstein Jr. Very, very, very funny. Even though it's black and white, it's very funny. So anyway, I, I will go back in uh, more details in, in the coming unit, but then you have to wait. Alexandro Volta, he was French, even though he has an Italian name, he lived in France. He was even knighted by Napoleon. You know Napoleon, right? Uh, he became Count Volta, and he's the one who understand how to make the first battery, right? And he built one. And because he was not a very nice guy, he made fun of Galvani, and because just for the story, Napoleon invaded Italy and uh, because Galvani was the enemy of the French Alexandro Volta, Galvani was totally censored. So he was not allowed to publish anymore and he was like, uh, he died penniless. It's a nice sad story because, or maybe that's what happened when you torture fraud. So we'll talk about batteries coming next. But that was the first battery, okay? I'm sure you did that for a science fair, a lemon battery. <coughs> Have you done that? Right, it's very cool. Maybe you should do it with your sister or nephew. It's very easy to do. So I will explain how it works. Or maybe you learn how it works in chemistry. So we, we go into more details. So anyway, the first battery was built. And then it was picked up, that invention, by Alexandro Volta. And the Volt is named after him, Volta, Volt. It was picked up by the chemist Humphrey Davy. And you should learn about him, because he was some character, okay? I will tell you why. But very interesting about him. He, he, he was not born rich, but he made it, made it all the way up. And he was very famous to have those amazing public lectures at the Royal Institution in London. Amazing, right? There was a line for people to wait for, uh, to, to listen to his lectures because he was doing amazing demo. So he used the first battery. So battery is a power supply that can burp out current electricity you know, continuously, and he got the idea to connect them in series. So let me ask you something. You have batteries here, right? Each one is 1.5, and I have four of them. How many volts do I get? Six volts, very good, right? Six volt batteries. And uh, just, just a parenthesis, um, I, I was uh, walking in uh, North Miami, and I don't know what's going on there, but I was walking, walking um, along the canal, and there, time to time, you always find golf cart, you know, that, that was used and end up in the canal. So I don't know if they steal the golf cart and then they race and they are on something not very legit and they end up in the canal, but something is going on. But I was thinking of this class and I say, oh, look at that. What is inside here? So what is it? A battery, a car battery. Do you know how many volt? 12 each, right? And they are connected in series. So each one is 12. Connected in series, what do you get? 72 volt, right? I think it's not that hard. You can look up tutorial how to build a 
carat gold, and, and they are quite expensive. Like I was looking up like 5,000, maybe up to 10,000. So I saw that you can order from China an electric truck, but, but very small one, like a golf car, car for $2,000, something like this. But you have to build it up. And you, you have a voltage of uh, 64 volt that you connect the battery in series. So you can do that. If you are bored, you can order an electric uh, golf cart from China and you can build it on your own. So I thought that that was super cool. So I, I was thinking, I used to live in New York City and uh, during the lockdown in New York City, not that I was ever in lockdown, but during the lockdown, they, they used to do race on the highway because the highway was empty. So it was crazy. And I heard in Miami, it was the same thing. So now maybe they got hooked up to racing and they cannot do it on, on, on the highway. So maybe they do it on, uh, along the canal with a golf cart. I don't know. I'm trying to understand what was going on. My thinking, I don't know. So anyway, at the time, he got the idea to connect all those batteries in series, thousands of them, like 2,000 of them. So he got a huge voltage. And he used the voltage to do something that you learn in chemistry called electrolysis. Right? So, for example, you take water, then you have water and you have a battery. You, you have the battery and, and the electrodes here goes into the water, so plus and minus. What's going to happen to the water? So it's not going to be charged. Water molecule is what? So that will be not an insulator, the water, because it has some stuff inside. You have current flowing inside the solution from the plus or the minus. Water, it's H2O, so you're going to use that energy from the battery. What's going to happen to the water? Huh? So now it's not going to be charged. You have current flowing through the water, and you have a chemical reaction happening that at the two electrodes, you get Water get break down into two substances, two gas, which is hydrogen and oxygen. On one electrode, you're going to get hydrogen. That's how hydrogen was discovered. And the other electron was oxygen. So electrolysis, it's a, a method used in chemistry to have a current going through a solution and with that, you can break down substances. You can break down molecules. So he was uh, isolating. He was able to, especially because you have to take chemistry, all of you, I think. So he isolated potassium. It's an iron. Uh, sodium, sodium, I remember. It's Na++. Calcium and other elements. Isn't that cool? He did it. He didn't have any education. He didn't go to college, right? He, he did it with motivation and just by doing experiments. And then he used also his uh, method here, his <coughs> protocol connecting batteries together in series to provide here a huge voltage. And if you have two electrodes next to each other, you're going to make a spark because the electrons want to jump. You can try that, but don't try it. Okay? If you put your finger next to the hot, uh, here you have, this is the hot one, the small one is the hot one. If I put my finger inside or next to it, you can make a spark because they're going to jump into me to go to the ground. So you can, you can have a spark here between the plus and the minus. And that was used to make the first straight lightning. You have a spark here. It was very bright, very luminous. It's called the arc lamp, and it was used for the streets. 
Isn't that amazing? So you, you have to read about him because he was such an amazing public speaker because he was getting high before doing his lecture. Okay? That, that's why I'm not amazing, okay? Because I don't get high before. And, and uh, the way he did it is with the laughing gals. Um, if, you're, if you take a chemistry la, la, uh, uh, class, it's, it's called nitrous oxide. Okay, so it has nitrogen and oxygen. You breathe it, and and shoom, right? You are very happy. <laughs> so he he was so happy using it that he organized maybe the the first drug party, right? People would get together, breathe that oxide, like like the, the laughing gas. They will all get high, and they will all be very happy. Unfortunately for him. Like it happened when you use too much of the good thing, he died because his uh, lungs were too much damaged from using it. But you can use it at the dentist, you know that? Because um, uh, you, you, you don't, uh, it, it, uh, oh, they, they offer it to me because I went to the dentist and I'm a very difficult customer, right? I'm very scared, like get close to my mouth, I start to scream. So I say, don't you want the laughing gas? But uh, the thing is, is you have to pay extra to get that, so I didn't. And then I remember Humphrey Davy, so I'm, I don't trust them with their thing. So very interesting story about the laughing gas. And then we go to the beginning of the 20th century with J.J. Uh, Thompson in England, and he's the one who discovered the electron. The sub-particle, sub-particle that you find inside an atom that is called the electron, it was discovered by J.J. Thompson at the end of the 19th century. So the way he did it, he took a tube here, okay? That's called a vacuum tube. Okay, or CRT, cathode ray tube. And the way it works, you apply a voltage, so that will be connected to a power supply. So this is negative, this is positive. That will get very hot. Okay, it will burp out electron. Electron will rush to the positive, miss the positive, and you have an electron beam, okay? That's gonna be relevant for those going, for example, if you, if you are a technician and if you use X-ray, X-ray works exactly like that. When you have an X-ray, you have a cathode ray tube, so you still have electrons rushing, but then the electron here at the end at the end here, you put some kind of a very heavy metal. So the electrons, you know, because you apply a voltage, they're going to move really fast. What kind of energy do they have? When something moves, energy of motion is called kinetic energy. So they go really fast, they accelerate, and then they crash here because you have heavy metal. So all that kinetic energy has to become something. So if you apply a very high voltage, all that kinetic energy is going to turn into X-ray. So if you apply a high voltage, you're going to have hard X-ray or soft X-ray. So that's how we produce the X-ray for, for example, X-ray teeth, right? So that's the idea of the cathode ray tube, or CRT. So if you work in lab, chance are that you're going to use those devices. It's also used for spec a mass spectrometer, for example. So anyway, uh, those beam of electrons can be deflected here if you apply a plus. Minus is attracted to plus. So that's how he understood that electrons are negatively charged. So if electrons are negatively charged, obviously, the rest is positively charged because it has to be neutral. 
So inside an atom, we understood you must have plus and minus. Minus will be the electrons, and the rest is positive. That's going to be the protons, but he didn't know that at the time. So he is the one who was able to um, identify the electron as being a subparticle inside the atom. So he, he didn't get the model right. So before him, I'm sure if you take a chemistry class, you learn about Dalton. Have you heard about Dalton, right, the model of the atom? So they thought the atom was just like a ping pong ball, like just a ball, right? And then now they understood that you have stuff inside that ball. And he thought it looks like a plum pudding. That's English. Uh, in America, we will say blueberry muffin. Okay, so the muffin will be like the positive dough and the blueberry could be the electrons. So that's what he thought about. And we, we know that it's not what's happen, happening, right? The, the model of the atom, if I know if I skip somewhere there. No, not skipping there. You have the nucleus, which is positive charge, and then the electrons negative charge. But uh, he didn't know at the time and we call that the plum pudding model. Because I don't know if you've been to England, but boy, do they eat weird stuff. <laughs> I mean, very weird stuff. Like the gelatin, the thing that wiggle, and it's red and green and all the color. So plum pudding is, is another other delicacy. You really have, I mean, you really have to uh, like that. There is nothing like French food, of course. And uh, by the way, right now it's a special time because um, a French bakeries have something called galette de roi. And it's very, very good. And if you go to Miami Beach on Lincoln Road, you have a bakery called Paul. It's a French bakery. And they have this French galette. So I don't know if you, if you like uh, to learn about culture, but a French galette, galette des rois, means the king, king galette, right? Because it was a name after the roi mage, you know, when uh, they say Jesus was uh, born and the king brought him gifts, and so they, they made those galettes, that's why. Not, not for the religious part, but for the galette itself, you know, it's very good. So I recommend it's only during January that you're going to find those galettes. I don't know why I'm talking about galette because I ate one yesterday. <laughs> it was very good, but it, it, it's not very healthy. It has a lot of butter and, and sugar, and uh, I don't know what else they put inside, but it has frangipan, so it's like almond inside. It's very good. So anyway, um, then you had to wait for Rutherford, who was his student, to come up with the right model of the atom, right? The nucleus inside and the electrons outside. Is that clear? Any question? Right? So the discovery of the electron. And then skipping, 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 we get to 1940s the discovery of uh, the application of the semiconductors. That's a big breakthrough. And then you have the Silicon Valley and uh, California and everything else. So once they discover semiconductors and they build the transistor, then you have all the electronics that we have today. Before that, it was not possible. Okay, everything we have today, it's because we are able to make those tiny, tiny, itty, bitty components made of semiconductors, right? So they are special kind of material. They are not conductor, like copper. They are not insulator, like rubber. They are something in between. And because of their special properties, you use them in electronic device because 
Thanks, thanks to the semiconductor and thanks to the transistor, you can control the current. So it means you can build a valve, an electronics valve, so you can let current flow stop. Open, 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 stop. So how do you think this is used? If you have stop, 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 go. Stop, 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 go, 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 stop, stop, stop. What do you get? A code 01110011110, which is the code used by any, any electronic device. It's digital, right? It's digital information. So all the electronic device that we use today is digital, right? And that is because of those transistors, semiconductor, <laughs> thanks to the physics, yay yeah, to the physics, right? Without physics, no technology, no smartphone, no laptop, no desktop, nothing. Maybe it will be better, right? We just, you know, entertain ourselves with shocking frogs. Maybe it will be better than TikTok, I don't know. So semiconductors. Before that, so these, these are the electronic device of today. Everything inside is made of semiconductors. Before that, you had, uh, you have analog computers. So these computers are huge. And you still have to control the, the flow of current. You still have to do zero and one at the end. However, instead of using tiny itty bitty components, you have to use, they used to have cathode ray tube. So those things are huge. That's why the computers were huge. They were called analog computer. And uh, if you go back in the 1950s, the first IBM computers were huge. Right? It was like a, the, the computer, you do two plus, plus two here, and then you go boom, 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 boom. Two plus two equals four. Right? It's very slow. You, you, for those who are interested, we used to have a punch cards in the, in the 1950s. So we have came a, a long way. We have come a long way from the blackboard to the analog computers using cathode tubes to the digital age, right? And this is all thanks to physics. Yeah. Okay. They, I don't remember uh, who invented semiconductor, but what is interesting is that at the time they didn't know what to do with it. Okay. They, they were physicists. Okay. It's nice. They behaved like this. They didn't know what to do with it. And in 1941, at Bell Laboratory in Princeton, Someone used semiconductor to build the first transistor for a hearing aid, okay, so to, to amplify the sound. And then it was just a hearing aid, and then they understood the application of that transistor. So it's really the transistor, it's a very small component that did that electronics revolution. So it started in the Bell Laboratory in Princeton when they built the hearing aid using semiconductor. So I can I can show you online what a transistor looked like. And then they, they find out about the supraconductor, okay? That's another thing. Supraconductor are material that will let current flow forever, okay? I don't know, my computer is very slow. It doesn't have enough semiconductors inside. I don't have enough memory. Uh, it's an old processor. 
You know, every year they improve the processor. It's, it's a very um, famous rule that every year the component gets smaller and smaller and smaller. So that means you don't have to need enough space. So you can make the processor with more components. So you have more memory to deal with, to manage. So it gets better every year. If there is something you do not understand, you, you have to stop me because if you don't stop me, I keep going. And there is no stupid question, so don't don't hesitate to ask question. Okay. And um, I wanted to tell you something else, but I forgot. So that's what the transistor look like, and now they make it out of waffle silicon waffles so they are very very tiny and they are used to make um, uh, integrated circuits so it's everywhere so it's really the big revolution that started digital electronics all the digital age all the devices that you use today so a transistor can think of that as a valve that controls the flow of current. Let's say you have current flowing, so with the transistor you can stop the flow of current, you can let go. So you can go 0, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, therefore, you know, it's the digital age. Or you can use it to open the pipe or close the pipe. So you can use a transistor as a way to amplify the sound. So obviously my thing here is amplifying the, the sound of my voice, so it has to use transistors for sure. I'm amplifying not a good resolution because it's not a very expensive device, still, still expensive, but that's the idea of a transistor. Um, before that they use CRT, cathode ray tube. So anyway, you can uh, learn more about that. Any question? Okay, so the first unit is going to be about electric circuit, and I will bring demo on Thursday, right? I'm trying to have, I invested in, in demos this semester, so, and I, I will uh, show you that on Thursday. Just to introduce here, when you have an electric circuit, you always have two main components. You need to have the power supply, okay, so it could be a battery or it could be the, the plug here, so that will be a power supply, and you need a load, right? The load is what consumes energy, the power supply is what provides energy. Does that make sense? So if you have a battery here, the way it works, do you remember how we did the first semester for those, I'm sure, uh, whoever was the professor, you learned that if you take a mass, you do work on the mass, you're going to increase its potential energy, right? Gravitational potential energy. It's going to get, you are doing work against gravity, increase the potential energy, Potential energy, you can get it back. No, everything goes into kinetic energy. So here it works the same way. You have a chemical reaction that will give every single charge. And because we love Benjamin, we're going to say they are positive charges, even though it's really electrons. 
but let's say they are positive charge. So the battery, the chemical reaction, take a positive charge and lift it to electric potential energy, right? So every single charge, positive charge here is lifted to a higher level of energy, potential energy, and that energy is going to be used uh, by the load to turn that energy into something like here, into light. So you go from chemical energy, electric energy, potential electric energy, light and heat, and then you go back. So every single charge is going to have some potential energy. That potential energy is going to be delivered to the load, and then it comes back and it has no more energy. So a battery or power supply works like a pump, right? You increase the potential energy, and that potential energy is going to be burped out by your power supply, and then used by the load, and then it's going to start again. Is that clear? So the unit for charge, we're going to see that next time, is the coulomb. If you have a battery here, like let's say 9 volt battery, it means that every single charge has an energy of 9 joule. Remember, joule is a unit of energy. Just to give you an idea, and then we're going to go in more we're going to go over that on Thursday. But let me just ask you a question. So every single charge here is 9 joule. Okay, 9 joule will be delivered here and then it come back. What should I do here if I want more than 9 joule, but I have a 9 joule battery? So I cannot control the voltage. What is it that I can be done? So 9 joule is one single charge. Right, so one single charge holding nine joule. So if I want to have more than one joule, a uh, nine joule, what should I do? Have. So you can have batteries in series, but I have one battery, nine volt. Each charge is nine joule. So what if I want 18 joule? What do I do? Two charges, right? And if I have three charges, how much do I get? 27. Uh, so the, the way you do it, you can increase the number of charges per second. So you increase the energy available, OK? Don't, don't worry. We're going to see that. So make sure you get the book. OK, you can hand the book. I told you there is this nice book I like because I use the slide from here. It's an older edition. If you have the money or if you have a scholarship, you can get the book for Canvas. So before you leave, make sure you sign in. I, you have my tablet and you have the computer. And make sure to make new friends. That's why we leave early. Next class, we have a pop quiz.